I would like to welcome you to the last video on this channel in 2022. And today we're going to talk about my top five wildlife moments this year. If it's a photo, if it's filming some behavior, or if it's just being the experience of being out there, being one with nature. Without further ado, let's jump right in. And my place number five is my trip to Rinde. And I would maybe have considered that this trip would have ranked higher, but then I looked at all the other experiences and just trips I did this year, and I can happily say that this was a really good trip, but it's only place number five. I went to Runde with the expectation of being there for at least five days, and whoever watched that video knows I got COVID, and I was maybe already infected when I arrived. The first morning I woke up, I was coughing, and since I had a cold before, I knew I had to go home, I knew I had to isolate. I put a mask on, packed my stuff with a broken heart, and drove home before the real fever kicked in. Now, on Runde, it was really great to be back after two years, to just, in one evening, have so many different experiences with the great skuas. They're in the big grass on top of the hills in Runde. And really impressive birds, they show this defensive behavior when other birds land, that they spread out their wings and they look up and they warn. And yeah, I really don't want to mess with these birds. If you ever go to Runde, you're not allowed to go off the track. And you shouldn't, to not trample over some nests or anything else. So if you're on Runde, or anywhere in nature, behave respectfully. Then I had the opportunity to just go up the cliff and photograph, yeah, the northern Gannis from above. And I haven't done that on Runde before, and it actually opened up some ideas in my mind that I couldn't do yet, but that I'm definitely gonna do when I'm there next time. Maybe doing multi-exposures, long exposures, that's really the dream. Next time we're gonna do that. The day ended, of course, with one of the, yeah, most magnificent animals you can find along the coast, and that's the Atlantic Puffin. It's just a beautiful bird, and no one ever, I think, goes to Runde with a camera that has a longer lens, or even with a wide-angle lens, and is coming back disappointed because he didn't get shots of puffins. This is my place number four, the Black Grouse Lake. And I've been there, and that's why I would consider it more of a multiple trip tour. I've been there, I think, four or five times, maybe even six times, at least spending six nights there, uh, I think. And it is an experience every single night. In the mid of April, it's still really dark. Sometimes there's still snow. If you're lucky, I really would like to have light and snow. <laughs> I was denied that this year, but this year I got so much more than last year. And last year was insane to me. So this year I got them fighting. I got slow motion uh, video footage. I got some photos where they're in the air. And I think I could have done better with a camera that was a bit more reliable, sadly. But I also could have done better with some more discipline. You have a lot of animals fighting on these grounds. And it's really hard to just keep focus on one group. You just, you don't want to miss out FOMO, right? So you're just swapping back and forth. You're swapping back video, photo, video, photo. And the next time I will try to be more disciplined to just do photo or video for, let's say, 10 minutes and not switch in between. Stay on one fighting couple of black rows. <laughs>
I still have one video coming for you and there's yeah much more of that but it's also a bit different because it snowed and then also we have yeah a hormonal change in the females that I would like to show you even though it's not the mating itself. A last thing to mention about the black rose lake is maybe that even though I got sound the last year, this year I could do it with a bit more professional audio recorder. I just kind of placed it outside the tent when it was completely pitch dark or even the night before and then I just press it and let it run for hours and hours while I was in the tent, while the birds were playing outside. And I think I got really an amazing background sound for that video and I would like to continue this year on getting yeah, next year on getting just a bit more better background noise because I'm still not always right in the right mindset to directly take that up. And then when I'm editing, I kind of miss that I don't have this atmosphere for you to show you that. And I always just have to put in way too much music. Next one on the list, place number three, is my squirrel project. And I would really like to say that the local projects have been a bit short because I'm new here. If I go to Doverfjell from here, it's shorter now since I live here. Uh, it's easy because I know the place a bit. Here in Trondheim, I've never really looked after animals. And that makes it a bit tricky. I have to do a lot of scouting. And not all of this you see. You saw some of my field craft, but there's way more to that. And so far I haven't really found too many spots that I'm happy with or that are completely, um, yeah, always delivering. So I still have to do a bit more scouting, but I'm working on it and hopefully next year I can do more local projects uh, about maybe badgers, uh, foxes, if I'm lucky. But this local project that worked, mostly worked, is the squirrel project. I'm still working on it and you could see that over the, the different videos I try different stuff. I underexpose uh, the background to let the animals stick out, to make up black and white isolation in a way. I take photos of details, I take wide-angle shots, and I'm working on another thing um, where the squirrel is outsmarting my setup, and I'm trying to fix that right now. But the squirrel project is right there, and it's fun. And it delivers results. So uh, if you have problems with getting results, maybe try to focus on a common animal, and just try to shoot it from so many different angles, and then you will definitely have some success and you will have learned something. I have so many more ideas that I want to do with the squirrels and uh, I think to continue, yeah, I will continue on that in 2023. Maybe even something with snow. Maybe you have noticed it snowed in the last two days. There was nothing two days ago. Now we have uh, 70, 80 centimeters. It's really hard to get through the new snow, but I love it. We're getting closer to the top and what would be a top three in my top five? without Dovrefjell. And I've been many times to Dovrefjell this, uh, this year, and you might wonder which one might have been my favorite. Uh, maybe you haven't seen all of them yet, but I can tell you uh, the one that's my favorite is already out. I was there in May, I was there in July, I was there in September, and my favorite is July. May was a complete disaster. The wind is in such a bad direction that the landscape doesn't give you any shelter, at least along this whole path for most of it, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of horrible. And July was just after I injured my back. I had COVID and a cold. The summer was horrible weather. You didn't even want it to go out. And uh, then finally, the weather looks okay. It's still a bit cold, but we can brace that. So we go out into the mountains. I finally built up my tent again. And the golden plover is just there you know and uh, you can try a bit sadly this year i didn't have the greatest sunsets and sunrises a lot of clouds and that's just not something you can change even though i was out a lot i was not really getting the luck of much golden light and that's okay because i still got so many nice opportunities to photograph that animal on those few days and also just photographing moose afterwards
at that time I still had so much back pain from my air mattress that I cut the trip short, but uh, that's not a problem gladly anymore. So my back seems to have recovered really good. And in general, I can tell you I'm really happy how it's going fitness-wise. Now these two months where I'm doing not so much because it's dark and it was gray, now beautiful snow. I have built up quite some better fitness. Uh, maybe you remember last year when I went out in fall to Dovrefjell and I could maybe walk 45 minutes with my weight on my back. And that was way less than I'm carrying this year. Uh, this year in the beginning I could not really on the bad snow in May and Dovrefjell walk more than half an hour because it would just kill me. Then in July no issue and then in September I'm just walking for two hours and I'm like, I'm actually fine to continue further. So there's definitely a lifestyle change now that I live here. Um, that's making things easier for me and that's actually making me more healthy and feel better. Before we get to place number one, some honorable mentions. Great trip that I had this year was to the islands of Trana and Lovind. I didn't really get uh, the photos I wished for. So that's why they're not really in this top five, though it was great adventure. Great trips just with a big backpack, hopping from island to island with Ireland ferries. I could do, definitely do it again, and uh, just do it at a better time of the year and hopefully get more photos of birds. So that was great. Another honorable mention, my uh, local lake in Germany. I was surprised how nice photos I could produce. The, dark, the days were really dark, that was the only disadvantage, but I could really get close to animals um, and see what's, at, what's just closer to home. Let's get to place number one, and it's a bit difficult because you haven't seen that yet. So you will get a few clips from my trip uh, of looking for wild reindeer. This video is coming in January or February. I'm just working the concept out. I want a concept beside uh, Horizons Dovrefjell uh, that's just looking at all the mountain ranges. And that's a bit more flexible. Well, I will continue on Dovrefjell for sure, because I'm just gathering it, gathering up material. But I was out looking for wild reindeer, and that's really a challenge. A lot of like crawling over the floor, a lot of hiding, walking so that the animals can see you, that the animals can uh, yeah, smell you. Finding the animals in the first place so difficult part-wise, such a challenge. So in the end, when you finally get results, you're so happy, you're so feeling so fulfilled. We're after one small group of reindeer, but there's also a herd over there moving in this direction. So maybe this is our lucky day. wind is in my face so they can't smell us. But it's way easier to get closer to a muskox than film a muskox and then wild reindeer. We walk behind one another so it seems that we're less people. I really greatly enjoyed that and um, 
I hope you're going to enjoy this new topic as well. That was my top five. And now we will go on uh, to talk a bit more privately <laughs> about how the year has been for me. And for everyone that was just interested in the wildlife directly and not the background to how I'm continuing my wildlife photography and my journey, you can turn off, of course, or you maybe stay or watch another video on the channel. Okay, it's getting a bit cold because I'm standing here way too long. So I had to change the jacket. But how has my life been going over the last year? I think I'm really working on myself. I have as much work as I can handle. I have a passion in my life and I actually feel worth something. So that compared to the last years is really important for me to actually open up again. And one thing that I can directly say about the wildlife photography is that even though I didn't get like the dramatic light this year and I wasn't so lucky maybe with that, I have been on a lot of tours compared to last year. Last year I was on one tour to Dorfelfjell in fall. That was basically it besides summer holidays. Summer holidays. <laughs> and I used that to work on videos in a way. But this year I've been doing like six, seven, eight tours or something. We've been to Dorfelfjell four times. I've been to another national park to film the wild reindeer. I've been on the islands. I've been to Runde. I've done the Black Rose project. You see, it adds up. Um, and I had way many more ideas that were sometimes blocked due to the weather being complete um, end of the world <laughs> or having corona. So you see that I could do way more since I live here. And that's so easily. And I don't even own a car myself, but we get to that because I have to thank some people for really helping me yeah, just getting on here. Because, you know, there's a lot that happens if you move to another place and it's not really easy, even though you know the country already. I think another really important thing is that my therapy has started and I'm doing therapy on my own in a way, but also group therapy. And I think it's really important to me uh, because I can already see that I feel way better than compared to three, four years ago. So I can only recommend that uh, therapy does work. It's not easy to change yourself, but I can only tell you that it's working. And I think it's important to uh, bring the message out that also if you're feeling bad and especially also if you feel bad and you're male you don't have to brace that yourself it's okay to go out and ask for help that's the only thing I want to say to that uh, I think that's important that that's said more often you don't just have to suck it up you don't just have to pull it together it's okay to let someone else help you but of course change has to come from here you have to make the decision that you want to make change and I'm definitely there for some years already. I think I'm developing really good, so I'm actually thinking that this could work out for me because a few years back, I really just wanted to die. Nothing else, just plain. That's how, how it was. And yeah, I didn't want that to continue, obviously. Yeah, so it's the end of the year and I just mentioned it already. There were some people that helped me greatly. I mean, I have to, of course, thank my family. They were there for me when my world was crumbling and breaking together and I could find refuge at home. But then, of course, I moved to Norway and you can't just do that without a lot of organization. It's insane if you have no connections. It's easy when you're a student. <laughs> you get social security number thrown after you and a place to live. But in this situation, I had nothing. I had no perspective or job. Looks very different now. I'm feeling quite secure. I have to thank my friends. I've made some friends uh, over the last years and I've missed them greatly when I didn't leave in Trondheim. And it's so great to be back and see that everything is just back to how it was. And uh, I stayed at that place for the, I think the first two, 10 days or two weeks to organize the first things and they even would have let me stay longer. And I can't only, uh, can only say about and Maris, I can't thank you enough. And I'm really glad that you're engaged now and that everything is moving on. And I, you have to imagine, I have so much things on my plate that I have to organize and they were even so uh, kind to me to often lend me the car because they just don't need it so often. And then I could do the tri uh, these trips. I mean, eventually, yeah, I think next year, yeah, I will get a car myself because I have to. Uh, but there was just one less thing to worry about, you know? And without that help, I could have, couldn't have done most of these trips so easily in any case. Uh, I could have still gotten the train to Dovofjell, but it made a lot of things easier, I have to say. 
And so thank you so much and also to everyone else that is basically that I still know from back then that I got to know now. And I'm really just happy, happy how that worked out because uh, during Corona and the last three years in Christiansand, socially I wasn't too happy and that has shown on me. Now from something really good to something maybe bad for some people that enjoy watching this channel often. And uh, YouTube and my future on YouTube, I think it will look different than it has been. I had one goal this year and I'm not even still now, I'm still not sure if we will reach it this year, I think. It will be really close. I wanted to reach 5k subscribers. It really doesn't matter anymore though, because I set that goal for the mid of the year. <laughs> so... Uh, I really am not too happy with the development of the size of the channel. And I know that's not supposed to be everything. My passion lies in photography, my passion lies in making videos, but lately my passion hasn't been really, really yeah, laying with editing videos. And sometimes, sadly, the little output that it gets. And that's of course also that you look a bit too much at the numbers, and I could prevent that a bit when I did the break on not viewing at comments for some time and not spending too much time on YouTube and that definitely helped with the numbers. But at the end of the day, YouTube is just not paying me enough for the time that I use on it and I just use a lot of time on it. You have to imagine how much time I use on it it just doesn't add up. I can't justify trying a YouTube or making YouTube so much for all the other things I should be organizing when I would want to get further with wildlife photography. And so in 2023, I guess there will be less, maybe just uh, a video a month. Uh, maybe I will make longer videos. I haven't really thought about the concept in general, but um, yeah, I look at it as a passion thing. The less I film myself, the more I will film wildlife. So you just have to add that up. Uh, though I enjoy doing vlogs and uh, I just want to develop further and I really want to get to uh, do short movies that just have a bit more impact on another scale than YouTube, maybe. And you can do these things on YouTube if you have success. And uh, even though I, of course, grew this year, I think I grew less 2022 than compared to 2021. And the thing is, my quality has increased. So uh, you're asking yourself, uh, Will it really happen just because I push harder? And that's just a situation when you push harder, you just get more frustrated. And that's not what I will try further on. I just want to develop and I don't see it really. I don't want to stop. I will definitely continue because sometimes uh, production companies can find my video material on YouTube and then they contact me and then I can actually sell something. But uh, to being a wildlife photographer, I guess I will concentrate more on uh, making short movies, trying to organize workshops locally, one-on-one, -on -one, and maybe also some weekends. A lot of people overestimate how much social media is actually gonna make you in money. And um, if I would do this for YouTube advertisement, I would not be doing it. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad if I can pay for the costs that actually flow into that and uh, now uh, to uh, really, uh, for some people, maybe disappointing realization, but uh, I'll let you guess, how many prints did I sell this year? Uh, tenth, hundreds or thousands? And as Tywin Lannister asked that question, it would be the same answer. Zero. So just keep that in mind if you want to get into this. Um, it's not that easy. The market is oversaturated and that's also one reason why I want to stick more to workshops and making videos because, yeah, let's face it, that's just how the industry is and I will also not sell my photos for 20, 30 dollars. I don't make any profit on that when I have to send them somewhere. That's complete nonsense and I also think that my art, because it's limited, has its worth and that's just how it is. I will not step down from that in any case. Well, this was my top five wildlife photography moments this year and basically a wrap up of my year on YouTube uh, with wildlife photography outside there, outside of YouTube. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you watch my videos uh, the next years to come as long as I produce YouTube videos. And if there is short movies coming, I will of course let you know. Um, I hope you watch them. I don't know where I will publish them. Um, maybe they also end up on the channel afterwards. 
but I just don't know these things yet. So thank you for a great 2020, 2022, 2020, 20, what, 2022. And I see you soon in the next year, but also with some videos that have been produced already this year. Bye.